Hi everybody, it's Lou Manfredini. I am ACES Home Expert and I'd like to welcome you to our YouTube Homeowner 101. So the way this is gonna work is if you have any questions about going on around your house, you know, things that are questionable, well, here at ACE, we're all about being helpful, right? That's our thing. And I wanna be your uh, buddy in the business here. So I'm coming to you from uh, a Midwest location that's top secret. No, actually, we're in the Chicagoland area. And it is freezing cold here. So if you happen to be living in that part of the uh, country and you've got questions about, uh, you know, things like how do I make my house more energy efficient, please just submit your question uh, on the, what is there, like, a, is there a, uh, a box that people can submit this question. My lovely assistant, Carol Merrill, uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember who Carol Merrill is, will read the questions. We're trying to figure out how YouTube can get better at this and I'll give a call to whoever owns the company so that we can figure out how I could see your face and show that. But for now, type out your question. Now what will be helpful to me is if you can give me as much information as possible and in particular where you live. So, you know, if you live in Arizona and you're asking a question about something, then I'm not thinking that it's freezing cold like it is here uh, in the uh, Chicagoland area where we're coming from. So go ahead and type those questions. Allison will read them and I will do my best to answer them. Oh, one other thing. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel because you'll get alerts for other programs that we're gonna have. We're gonna have a lot of cooking lessons with Chef Jason, who is terrific and really helps us a lot here at Ace Hardware, as well as Annie, our paint expert, who also does a lot of events as well, which I think you'll find to be pretty helpful to um, help you maintain your home. And here at Ace, we're all about helping you to do that and protecting, you know, for what for many of us is our biggest investment, our homes. So let's start things out. Allison has a question and from someone. Who can we help out this, uh, right. this evening? Carol Lee, she wants to know the best tool to drive straight into studs. I'm rather new and usually use smaller to larger screws. Got to be an early, an easier way. Hmm. Well, um, I, I don't know what it is you're going to hang on the walls. If you're going to drill into it, then really probably a cordless drill is key. But I'll, I'll tell you this, that with cordless drills, it's all about the tip that you're going to use, especially if you're driving screws in there. So, you know, most drywall screws that you're going to purchase or deck screws, the Phillips head bit that's on the top of it uses what's called a number two bit. And so if you're going to be driving a lot of screws in there, cordless uh, drill would certainly be the way to go or a Phillips head screwdriver with a number two bit using standard drywall screws and you should be able to go right through the drywall or plaster right into the framing or studs and it'll uh, make quick work of it and do a nice job for you. All right, the next question is from Gary Mills. I have a grease stain on my patio papers. What is the best product to use on this? I have a power washer also. Hmm. All right, so with grease, obviously, we've got to break up the oil uh, as best we can. Now, there's a bunch of uh, products that you can buy. One in particular that I really like is something called Crud Cutter. It's with two Ks, and it is a terrific degreaser. And what I want you to do is put it on there full strength. And the idea is get it on the paver, pour it on there, use a, um, a really stiff bristled wire brush on there, and what will happen is you start to work it, uh, Gary, it's going, to, um, it's going to froth up. Leave it there for about 10 minutes as is, scrub it again, and then you can use your pressure washer to rinse it off. Now here's a trick. If that grease was there for a really long time, the thing is that pavers are very porous and they can absorb that grease and that discoloration may be permanent. If you can't get it out, then think about another location on your pavers. Maybe there's a, a paver that's underneath a table or underneath a piece of patio furniture. Pull up that brick paver, take the one with the stain out, swap them out, and don't tell anybody you did that. <laughs> All right. Foo Man, he says, I need a pressure washer and inflator. Any tips? Pressure washer and an inflator. Mm, really, they're two separate tools, right? Um, when it comes to pressure washers, your two choices are either gas or electric. The electric ones uh, do a pretty nice job. They don't have the 
the kind of uh, sustained power that a gas-powered uh, pressure washer has. Uh, you want something that has at least 2200 PSI, and you'll normally get that out of the kind of entry-level gas pressure washers. When you get into the electrics, that's kind of the high end of it. But the benefit of the electric is there is no gas or oil to deal with. An inflator, um, when it comes to, you know, tubes and tires and things like that, Campbell Hausfeld is a name that's been around forever when it comes to inflators. And actually, Black & Decker also makes a really nice inflator that comes with a lot of different tips. And I believe both of them can do up to 100 PSI. And uh, you just plug them in, set them up, and you're good to go. All right. The next question is from Greg. He says, is it best to rent a mixer for cement or buy truck load and pour? It's a 14 by 13 foot spot and about four inches deep. Okay, um, so 14 by 13 by four inches, I'm gonna do my quick math, is probably three yards of concrete from a uh, ready mix company. And most ready mix companies for that small load, you're gonna pay a delivery charge for that concrete and also you get a certain amount of time to unload each yard of concrete. So I would call. Three yards of concrete is probably, I'm gonna try and do the math here, um, it's probably 30, no, it's probably 40 bags of concrete, 80 pound bags of concrete. That is a lot of concrete, even with a mixer. So, um, and the problem is if you're mixing it by hand with such a large uh, area like that, you won't be able to keep up. It, in other words, you want to be able to finish that all uh, at the same time so you get a consistent look. So if it were me, I would get the truck, but know what your costs are up front. You're going to need some help. You're going to need somebody with a wheelbarrow uh, that's really strong. <laughs> and, uh, and you're gonna have all the right finishing tools to be able to get it done. So I'd get it from a ready mix company for sure. All right, now you've got Richard and he is from Mile City, Montana. <coughs> Mile City where? Montana. Oh, all right, big sky country. What's best to put on basement steps and low, pr and low profile carpet or no carpet? Second question. And what's the best paint to use in the closet, white or color? Um, well, on basement stairs, uh, you know, the thing is, with a low pile carpeting, you'll get a really nice grip uh, going up and down the stairs, whether you're barefoot or wearing shoes. The beauty of the low pile is you won't catch depending on the type of shoes you're wearing, like let's say a pair of hiking boots or something like that. Um, that would probably be my, my first choice on a set of basement stairs. I'm assuming we're not getting any mud down there, uh, although you do have a lot of that red clay in Montana mud there. But um, that would be my first choice. And then the second thing on the paint of the interior of the closet, I mean, most people default to white just because you want it to be as bright as possible. If there is a light in there, it, can, it really doesn't matter because by the time you load it up with clothes, I would just pick a lighter color. Um, but, you know, white is a fine choice and will give you as much reflection as possible, uh, as I mentioned, especially if you have a light in there. All right, we got Leah and she is from North Central Wisconsin. All right. Is there anything you can do to patch or save what's left of a chipping cement driveway? Yeah, um, sorry about your Packers. Um, and uh, so that was sincere, wasn't it? No, I'm kidding, I, I'm sorry. So um, here's the thing, this time of year, you're not gonna do anything in Wisconsin, it's just too cold. Um, and there is some lightweight patching material, what they call a top coat. Both Sacrete and Quickcrete make this product. You can get it at Ace. Comes in a 60 pound bag. They may have to order it in for you, but you would use something called a steel trowel. So you'll take up as much of the loose material as possible and you'll mix this material up. It's very smooth in consistency and you'll trowel it over the top to fill in the gaps. There will be a color variation, um, but 
the thing is, is that it will prolong the life of the concrete that you have. On a side note, uh, for those of you that live in a colder climate, you know, ice melt is, uh, is just not, it's really hard on surfaces like concrete, brick pavers, uh, decks, whatever it might be. I really want you to consider upgrading the ice melt that you use from a rock salt, which is the most aggressive, to something like a calcium chloride or a potassium chloride that you'll find at the ACE. And, um, and the other thing too is, especially here in the Midwest, I see I mean, with the cold weather that we have going on right now, people just overdo it with the ice melt. If you see piles of ice melt because you're throwing it on there, that concentration of the ice melt on the surface is what's going to eat away the material. So take a broom if you can and brush that away. You just really almost want like a, you know, like you're salting your eggs, just a little layer of that and don't overdo it and uh, really be mindful of things like uh, grass lines and bush lines to avoid uh, getting the ice melt on that. Even the type that I mentioned, the calcium chloride and the uh, uh, potassium chloride, that's not great for vegetation, but it's much less harmful than rock salt. All right, we have Eastern Pennsylvania here. Do I need a vapor barrier with rock wool exterior insulation? The house does not have any other vapor barrier. Well, if you have rock wool and it's bare, meaning that there's no paper on it, then the answer would be yes. If we're, you know, if we're talking about uh, like a new construction or, or if that's what you have. If it has paper on it, that rock wool, then that is the vapor barrier. Remember that the vapor barrier goes on the warm side of the building. So, you know, if this is the stud wall here like this, okay, and this is the house, right, where you are, okay, the insulation is inside in between the studs right there. And then that vapor barrier, which can be a piece of plastic or visqueen, you staple onto the surface of the studs and then you install your drywall or your plaster there. So vapor barrier always on the warm side to keep it from penetrating in to that wall cavity, not on the outside. All right, Ivy would like to know, what is a good high arch kitchen faucet? at a reasonable price. Moen. Um, I just installed, um, I happened to own uh, a rental property and we just recently redid the kitchens and I installed Moen high rise kitchen faucets in all of them. It's a, it is a, I, I don't even wanna say that it's middle of the road, it's better than that. And you can get it in chrome, stainless steel finish, bronze, um, they have some really nice options for you. Actually, we carry here at ACE several different versions of their high rise. And I want to say you're probably going to spend uh, just under $300, like maybe $270 or something for that. Here's the thing. There's cheaper ones out there, but the cartridges are garbage. Uh, and so I wouldn't waste your money on that. Like you could find something for $99 or $150, but then a year from now, you're gonna be like, this thing is leaking, or the handle feels loose. Moen is just like a workhorse, and they're also really nice looking. All right, BW, he is from the San Francisco Bay Area. Nice. And I think he's living- Wait, wait, how about those uh, 49ers? We just said the Packers. Okay, keep going, <laughs> keep going. I think that BW is living my nightmare. He says, we have an old concrete drainage pipe and it's about three inches in diameter outside. And rats are using this pipe to access the crawl space. We want to plug the pipe keep, uh, and keep drainage, but it's cracked badly. That is like a horror movie. Um, it's a drainage pipe, say that again? It's, a, it's an old concrete drainage pipe, about three inches and it's outside and then the rats are getting it through the crawl space. So the Once drainage we, pipe's coming back into the house. We want to plug the pipe. Uh, to but for, keep, to the, keep drainage. the drainage. But it's cracked pretty bad. Okay, well, we need to, we need to fix the cracked pipe. Um, so if the concrete, I, I, I'm gonna, in my head, I think this is what, what you have, okay? 
So the pipe comes down like this, and it, there should be a trap somewhere, and then it goes off, I guess, coming in here. Here's the concrete, and this is all cracked. So I want you to cut the concrete like square around that pipe, all right? So now we, we're going to take that concrete out. So if I'm, if I'm looking at the top of it, right, there's, I'm looking down, you're going to take a masonry blade on a circular saw, and you're going to cut that concrete out and break it out. Now I see that pipe. And if I have to replace that piece of pipe down to the trap here, I would do that, okay? And then get a grate that goes over the top of it that fits on top of that where the little rats or the big rats can't go in. So line that all up and then re-pour this concrete around that pipe and you're going to solve your problem. There's no quick fix. I mean, there is a quick fix. You could take... Um, you know, if, you, if that's just too much to do right now, you could take some hardware cloth, which you can buy it in, uh, in a roll, or you really just need like a two foot by two foot piece, and you could place it over the concrete and then take some mechanical fasteners like Tapcon and just screw it to the concrete to at least buy you some time until, uh, I mean, it's not freezing cold in San Francisco, but until warmer weather so you can fix it the right way. Hardware cloth, screw it down over the top, you'll get the drainage, you'll keep the rodents out. All right. Jack from Florida said, I would like to seal my brick pavers. Which do you suggest? Is oil-based better than water-based sealer? Does one dry faster than the other? <clears throat> I wouldn't do oil-based. Um, I would do water. <clears throat> and um, there is a, actually, not to be overly promotional, but it is the Ace Homeowner 101. Ace, the Ace brand under the Royal brand makes a really good concrete and paver sealer. I believe I'm, it's, I'm, I'm in the room right here. I could probably find the gallon of it, but I think it's called Deck Seal or All Seal, and it's in the paint department at Ace. It's a really good waterborne sealer for concrete pavers. And um, if you follow the preparation of making sure that the pavers are as clean as possible, the beauty part of this time of year, it's the perfect time to put this down in Florida because the temperatures are lower, you don't have the high sun. So it's, it's really good, depending on where this is in your, uh, you know, I'm sure you get direct sunlight, you know, middle of the day. It's a really good thing to do early or in the afternoon so that you can slow the curing and the drying because that's what's going to give you the longest um, uh, durability when you put this down. All right. Is CMA the only alternative to melt snow safely for a property that uses well water? Is what? Calcium magnesium acetate. Oh, CMA. yeah. So calcium, is it the only? Only alternative to melt snow safely for a property with well water. I, I, okay, so you're worried about the runoff from the, I mean, for, for that respect, um, if you're really worried about the runoff, what I would do is use liquid calcium chloride. And it's hard to find, but it comes in a gallon jug or a five gallon jug, and you use it in a pump sprayer. What I really like about the liquid calcium chloride is that, <clears throat> You know, now, when the, when the uh, weather forecasters tell us, oh my gosh, it's going to snow like crazy, or oh boy, it's going to rain like crazy, they're usually pretty right. You know, I mean, it's, it's so if, they, if they're telling you that it's gonna, you're going to get six inches of snow overnight, you go out there with the liquid calcium chloride and you use the pump sprayer and you apply it to the surface, it'll absorb into whatever you're putting it on, concrete, pavers, whatever. And um, when the snow hits it, a light snow, it'll melt. Heavy snow will make shoveling so much easier and ice won't form. And here we are, end of January. If you put a couple of applications down based on your needs, you get this residual value and you get very little runoff because the substrate absorbs it. And um, it's just, a, you get great control over it. I really do like it, liquid calcium chloride. Is it rude of me to take a sip of water? No, it is not. So you take Pardon in me. this next question. I like Virginia's honesty here. 
She says, for someone who knows absolutely nothing about working with cement, all right, is there an easy cement mix for putting rocks for a rock garden together? <clears throat> um, yeah, <clears throat> for that, I would use a sand mix um, because it is the aggregate in it is sand, not stone. And so it, it creates this very um, smooth texture that allows you to place rocks, put it together, and will act like a mortar. And uh, it's a bonding material as well. So use like a sacrete or a quick crete sand mix. All right. Let's see. The next question is from Barb. Do you have a recommendation for a product to get rid of chipmunks? I do, um, and it's not a shotgun. Um, there is a uh, there is a product that is not labeled for chipmunks, but I have used it for this called Bonide Sonic Spike. And basically, you know, if this is the ground, okay, and maybe this is your deck or your house where the chipmunks are coming in, this little Sonic Spike looks like a T and it has a, a shaft like this and it comes to a point and they make two kinds one you drop some C batteries in and the other is solar powered you drive this into the ground near where you have the chipmunk problem and what it does <clears throat> is it chatters underground and it makes the sound of a rodent in distress so it kind of goes ee like that you you really can't, they're pretty good, right? A little chipmunk. Um, you can't hear it above ground, but the chipmunks do. I had a terrible chipmunk problem at our house. They were going underneath the back steps and it was driving me crazy. And I had used, um, you know, some of the repellents and whatnot. And I'd used some of the, the shakes, you know, that smell like a coyote urine and things like that. Here's the thing you gotta know about rodents. They are, rodents and birds are creatures of habit. And like they know they want to come to this house and they keep coming back. This is true of skunks and things like that. You want to make it as unpleasant as possible. This thing works for about a 30 foot area. Put a couple of them over where you're having this problem. And within less than 10 days, you'll solve the problem. All right, we got Jerome. He is from the Finger Lakes area in New York State. Nice. I am not using my wood fireplace insert and want to air seal it. What's the best way to go about doing that? Well, um, <clears throat> so they do make, uh, and it's, it's not something that we sell, but you'd probably have to go to a fireplace and chimney place. They do make a bladder that can go up into the flue and almost like when you do a blood pressure, uh, you know, on your arm, you pump it up. This bladder goes in there and you pump this thing up and a red, um, the ribbon hangs down so you know it's there and it does seal the flu. Now depending on how your damper is that might be difficult you, you got to kind of fish it up inside there and pump it up. The other thing you could do is if you don't use it at all there are some decorative panels that you can buy that go in front of your fireplace that I mean I've seen that look like a picture of trees or it looks like brick or it looks like wood or they even have a holiday theme if you wanted to and there's um, insulation around it and it goes right in front of the hearth and seals it that way so that's a couple of choices uh, that you can use to air seal it. Eric says he has a glazed block basement can that be painted? You can paint anything just a question of how long you want it to last uh, the glazed block, um, with that, I would clean it really well, and then I would prime it with something that's going to stick to that glaze. So, uh, Kills makes a really nice sticky primer, uh, Bin makes a really nice sticky pi uh, primer. Do all that first and then use a, a good acrylic latex paint over the top of it. Benjamin Moore, uh, Clark and Kensington, both of them will do a really nice job. And, and the thing is that you gotta allow it to cure 
With the glazing, it's not gonna, the primer is important because you need a really good base for the acrylic to stick to because all the strength is gonna come based on the primer underneath there and you should be able to get the color and the look that you want. All right, Scott says, do you have anything to get rid of squirrels? It says red and gray, so maybe he has red and gray squirrels? Oh, I thought maybe you meant uh, it had to be red and gray. Um, same thing with uh, squirrels are tougher than like chipmunks because they, you know, they're up and down climbing all over the place. Um, with squirrels, if there's a specific, specific area where there's a problem, there is a, um, there is a repellent, a shake that you could use by, also by Bonide called Repels All. And there's also another product called Shake Away that would work as well. You just have to be really diligent about using it in the areas where there's a problem because uh, even though they, they talk about those uh, repellents being rainproof, it's been my experience that if you're gonna sprinkle it out there to kind of get the squirrels to go somewhere else, you need to come back every other day and just freshen it up a little bit. Again, creatures of habit, if you make it unpleasant for them, they'll go away. All right, we got Brad. He is from Lake Hapa, Kong, New Jersey. He's probably you probably that's right I now. bet that's exactly how <laughs> it's uh, pronounced. How much do you need to spend for a good cast iron stove? A good cast iron stove? Yeah. Are we talking they about like those fireplaces? You know? You're talking about it for like a cast iron, um, like a pellet stove, something like that, or a cast iron stove that you would put inside your home. We have several of them. Actually, we just did a video recently with a pellet stove. And uh, I mean, they're in the realm of about $500 starting and then they, you know, they go up quite a bit uh, depending on the style and the amount of BTUs uh, that you want to use. Um, I really like them. You know, the, the, the key with the, pel with the pellet stoves is that what we're talking about. Um, you're probably going to be more like the thousand dollar range for something that you're really going to like the look of and the durability with some fire brick inside and uh, um, yeah pr I, you're probably around that thousand dollar range all right we have uh, pm and they're from ohio how to best remove attic blow in insulation to work on electric wiring yeah um, so be very careful up there and um, make sure that you're wearing long sleeves, gloves. We've certainly gotten used to masks because uh, you don't want to breathe in all those fibers. Use a rake. Uh, a rake is the best way to kind of pull it out of the way, like a leaf rake. If you can buy a smaller diameter rake, because you know a leaf rake obviously spreads out, but there's these thinner ones that you can pull out of the way, move the insulation uh, from where you need to do the work, and then make your repair and then just push it back with the rake. But a rake is a, a great way to, to, to handle that project. Those are all my questions all for now. Questions. All right, so if you have more questions, uh, you can just put them in there. It's very helpful. Thank you for all of you that have uh, posted questions and also told me where you're from so I can kind of, uh, um, you know, congratulate you if you're from San Francisco and say how sorry I am if you're from Wisconsin. But um, the whole point is that it's helpful for me to know uh, what's going on in the area that you're at to try and help you with um, any kind of home improvement questions you may have. Look, the thing I want you to remember is that um, at ACE, you know, our 5,000 plus retailers across the country are all independently owned and operated. So, you know, we, we talk a lot about being uh, members of your community. And I know for many of you that shop our stores, we so appreciate that. In particular, during these trying times, uh, we're doing our level best to try and be there for you for any kind of emergency situations and just everyday shopping to make it as convenient as possible. And one of the things that we're super proud of too is that we are carrying the best brands. Um, so the items that we know are gonna work really well for you in your home are here at ACE. Now, we really want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you'll get uh, great uh, uh, notifications when we do more of these uh, YouTube lives. As I mentioned, we'll have cooking classes coming up. We have a 
huge selection of great grills that are available here and so uh, knowing how to maximize that you're going to get a lot of help from our expert chef Jason who is just terrific and does a great job and then of course our paint uh, is a very important uh, category for us here at ACE and it's a great way to transform your home and uh, Annie our paint expert will be uh, doing other YouTube lives as well so subscribe to our YouTube channel Visit your participating ACE store when you can, and uh, we appreciate you joining us this evening for our Homeowner 101. Thank you so much, and remember, ACE is the helpful place.